What if you could have the power of a desktop gaming PC right here in your hands? This is the GPD Win 5 with AMD's brand new Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 processor, a unique external battery system and performance that rifles an eGPU. This device is making some seriously bold claims. Today we're putting it to the test to see if this is truly the new king of handheld gaming. Let's find out. The GPD Win 5 measures around 10.5 by 4.3 by 0.95 inches and weighs around 565 grams. The external battery pack measures around 4.36 by 4.34 by 0.71 inches and weighs around 350 grams. On the front is a great looking 7 inch touchscreen with a 1920 by 1080 resolution. It runs up to 120Hz with AMD FreeSync Premium support. It's a nice step up from the 6 inch 60Hz display on the Win 4 that desperately needed an upgrade. On the sides are dual capacitive analog sticks, D-pad and the usual gaming buttons. Near to the top right corner of the display is a button to switch between gamepad and mouse controls. On the bottom left area we have a power button which includes a built in fingerprint sensor. In the bottom right corner we have a start button, on screen keyboard button and an optical finger mouse. Along the bottom we have a menu button and volume buttons. On the bottom is a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port and a mini SSD slot which we will check out in more detail later. On the right side we have a micro SD card reader. The top features left and right analog triggers and buttons, 3.5mm audio jack, a DC barrel jack for 180 watts of power and a USB 3.2 Gen 2 port. The back has two small switches which change the analog triggers between analog and switch style input. This is great for racing games and first person shooters respectively. In the middle are two areas where the battery latches on and below is the battery connector. The battery simply connects by holding the two buttons on either side, then attach it to the back and release the two buttons for it to lock into place. In addition, you can also use the connection cable which reduces the weight of the handheld. It secures via two screws on either side on both ends to keep it connected and you won't have to worry about accidental disconnections. If you have the GPD Win 4 or you are simply interested in the differences between them, let's take a brief look to find out. The Win 4 measures around 8.6 by 3.6 by 1.1 inches and is the physically smaller device which makes it a bit more pocketable than the Win 5. The display as mentioned is a nice upgrade from the original 6 inch 60Hz display. The new 7 inch display supporting up to 120Hz is definitely far nicer to look at. Add in an extra inch to make it 8 will increase the size of the handheld. I think this is kind of already covered by the Win Mini at 7 inches and Max Series at 10.1 inches and I would expect to see new models of those in the future. One of the largest changes is the lack of a physical keyboard. The GPD Win Series have always featured one and the Win 5 is the first to not. This may have been a design choice by GPD or perhaps some kind of limitation due to the display type or physical size. The hardware inside is among the largest changes. We have a brand new processor which we will compare the performance with previous generation shortly. There are also dual fans to ensure everything is kept cool and of course the new power options which we will cover next. You have a few different ways to power the GPD Win 5. The included power brick supplies up to 180 watts of power via the barrel jack port at the top. If you are at home or near a power supply then this is the best option. You can also power it via the USB-C port with a charger or power bank for example, but you are of course limited by the charger's output. And last but not least, we do have the external battery. We tested the battery by pushing the Win 5 to its limits at 80 watts TDP for the brightness settings running Cinebench 2024 on a loop. We got around 42 minutes, which is a little lower than what we was expecting. The GPD Win 5 will be available in two CPU specifications. The AMD Ryzen AI Max 385 with AMD Radeon 8050S GPU and the Max Plus 395 with Radeon 8060S GPU. 
We are reviewing the 395 pre-mass production model and we will update with comparisons once the 385 model is available. For RAM there will be options of 32, 64 and a massive 128 gigs of LPDDR5X RAM which is unified memory meaning you could have up to an amazing 96 gigs of VRAM. For storage there is a choice of 1, 2 or 4 terabytes of M.2 2280 NVMe and for additional storage the brand new mini SSD format which we will cover in a moment. For communications we have fast Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3. In our fan noise and temperature tests while running the battery life test we got a highest fan noise of 67 decibels and highest temperature of 48 degrees C without the battery. There wasn't much difference with the battery attached which was good to see. The GBD Win 5 is the first device to feature the new mini SSD storage. It's not much larger than a micro SD card at only 15 by 17 by 1.4 millimeters in size. It offers up to 2 terabytes in storage size. We performed some tests with Crystal Dismark and got good results. Keeping in mind the Win 5's mini PCIe is 4x1 and not the full 4x2 spec for the mini SSD, we get around 1700 megs a second read and write speeds. With PCIe 4x2 we would have got upwards of 3700 megs a sec, so we are seeing around half the high speeds. But it's still pretty impressive and far faster than the 100 megs a second speeds of your average micro SD card. Time now for some benchmarks. We are running the system benchmarks at the default 55 watts TDP and where possible comparing with the previous Win4 generations running at their default 28 watts TDP. Again keep in mind that this is a pre-mass production model and there may be some changes before the final version. Cinebench performs single or multi-core tests on the CPU for rendering. We surprisingly see the single core performance slightly lower than HX370. However, on the multi-core scores we see a massive 51% increase in performance. Geekbench 6 also tests the single or multi-core CPU performance over a range of benchmarks. We see margin of error differences between the HX370 and Max Plus 395 single core performance. And again a large 36% increase in performance on multi-core. For both Cinebench and Geekbench tests we could of course increase the TDP to 80 watts for higher single core performance. PCMark tests a variety of day-to-day -day usage scenarios ranging from web browsing, video conferencing, through to working with large office documents, as well as image and video editing. We see a respectable increase of 8% over the previous generation. For 3DMark we ran the Time Spy, Night Trade and Fire Strike benchmarks. We also tested at 28 watts and 80 watts TDP. Even at 28 watts TDP, the Win 5 enjoys a massive lead over the previous generation. And as we increase the TDP up to 80 watts, it simply blows them out of the water with a 184, 104, and 189% increases in performance across the three benchmarks. It's amazing. For our gaming benchmarks, we will be testing at 28, 55 and 80 watts, which seems to be the highest TDP for performance. You can of course go lower than 28 watts, as low as 7, which we will try some games with later. For Forza Horizon 5, we are running on the very low graphic settings for legacy comparisons. You can quite happily run at 1080p ultra graphics if you wish to. We can see the Win 5 enjoy a 35% increase in frames per second at 28 watts, going up to a 92% increase at 55 watts TDP. For Cyberpunk, we are running on the low graphic settings for legacy comparisons. At 28 watts, we see a decent 49% increase in frames per second, and at 80 watts TDP, we see a massive 168% increase. For Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we are running on the very low graphic settings. At 28 watts TDP, we see around a 42% increase in frames per second compared to the HX370. And at 80 watts TDP, we see a 121% increase in FPS. Barring the single core performance, which is around the same as the previous generation, the Max Plus 395 posts some very impressive results. At 28 watts TDP we see around double the performance of the previous generation and moving up the TDP levels we see as high as a 189% increase at 80 watts which is around the sweet spot for the highest TDP. 
For our real world gaming performance test, we are seeing what kind of settings we can run at 1080p for either 60 or 120 frames per second, whilst at 80 watts TDP, to really showcase what the GPD Win 5 can do. On Doom Dark Ages, we can set it to 1080p on the default Nightmare graphics settings for 120 frames per second. On Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, we can go with a 1080p resolution, with the default maximum graphics settings for 60fps, and a mix of medium and high for 120fps. For Gears of War Remastered, we are going with 1080p default ultra graphics for 60 frames per second. As always, you can lower it a bit to take advantage of the 120Hz display. For Atomfall, we can go with 1080p default ultra graphics for 60 frames per second, or again lower it a little for 120fps. We will cover some more games and their settings in our final thoughts part after some emulation performance testing. Previous generation HX370 were already very impressive in terms of emulation. Everything up to the recent handheld generations would run fine with no issues at all. You can increase the internal rendering resolutions up to 1080p or even 4K if output into a monitor, or if you want to save battery life, simply lower the TDP. We can try a few of the more demanding emulators to get a general idea of what to expect. With Vita 3K you can go for 2x rendering resolution and a few other graphical improvements with no issues. As long as the game is compatible with the emulator, it should run great. You could go higher resolution if output into a TV. With the Eden emulator, we had no issues playing in docked, higher mode with our usual bunch of games. For first party games that we're not allowed to talk about, they were running smooth as silk. Very impressive. And finally, we have a handle that can run Xbox 360 games very well. Not all of the games are compatible with the emulator, but the ones that do work run extremely well with no drops in frame rates for example. The GBD Win 5 is the first Max Plus 395 handheld we have tried, so we can't compare directly with any others. But for our first, the GBD Win 5 is very impressive. We saw respectable increases in performance from the 8840U to HX370 generation, but we are looking at over double the performance with the HX370 to 395 at only 28 watts TDP. Cranking the TDP up to 80 watts, and we're seeing performance above the AMD Radeon 7600 MXT found in the GPD G1 eGPU. What would you rather be using or carrying around? A Win 4 with the G1, or a Win 5 to get even higher performance? To answer some questions most often asked, the power button location being near the controls was a non-issue for me. I never pressed it once and switched it off accidentally whilst playing a game, but I did accidentally press it whilst lifting it up to connect the battery. The lack of keyboard is a controversial issue. The GBD Win series has always featured a keyboard of some design, so it is a bit disappointing the Win 5 does not have one. But, to be fair, do you really need it? Most other handouts, including the Steam Deck, do not have one. Sure, it's nice to have for typing quick messages and shortcuts etc, but it's not the end of the world, and I did everything for this review without a physical keyboard. All in all, the GBD Win 5 is extremely impressive. It's got the performance of a decent desktop gaming PC, various options for power, and the cool mini SSD is a nice addition that we hope catches on with other devices. If you want the best performance handheld gaming PC, then the GPD Win 5 is currently the only option you need to consider. You can learn more and buy the GPD Win 5 from us at Droix. You get an exclusive 2 year warranty and customer service with us. Visit droix.co.uk, droix.eu or droix.net for UK, EU and worldwide shipping respectively. We hope you have found our main review useful. We will be covering some more aspects of the Win 5 in more depth with future videos and blog posts. So don't forget to subscribe and you won't miss them. Thanks for watching and we will see you in the next one.